give a quick update on my Instack Wander as I did make a few changes that I do think is pretty beneficial overall to the character. Now on this character, I was finally able to clear Wave Dirty Simulacrum. And it was actually surprising how easy it was with this character compared to like having to dodge everything on my Lightning Strike guy. At least at a beginning level of more mid-tier budget gear before you went into like having every slot being like 50x or so. Now, this character is really a joy to play. I do wish I had a little more ES, but a lot of the upgrades do come to be pretty expensive after a certain point in time. Now, I'm going to go over the pros and cons I found of Instacker, and then I'm going to go over my gear and tree and whatever changes I made. And then lastly, I'm going to showcase a quick Maven kill and a wave 30 simulacrum because... The damage is pretty nice in terms of single target for almost all content besides Simulacrum Wave 30. So let's get into the pros and cons. So right here, before we start, I'm going to do a quick little trade. I am trading off my sword for a wand. Now this is a new 11 link wand. And we will be trying out this wand tomorrow in the video. But before that, we will be using a regular setup because we want to be immortal for a while. And there are some nice... Look at this wand, but this will be for tomorrow's video, and I just got it, and the person just finished making it, so we'll see how it goes. But basically, for the pros for the character, absolutely aesthetic skill, right? You can, like, just, it just looks amazing while playing, and a lot of times people say, like, it's not about how the skill plays, it's about how the skill looks, right? That's why a lot of people, like, triple heralds and put all of the MTX on heralds. Now, it wouldn't just be enough if it looked nice, right? KB also has amazing clear or in stackers in general. You can stand very far away. You can clear the whole simulacrum where you can clear the screen super, super far away. And it just ends up being a super fun experience. Another pro is infinite ceiling. This build is truly one of the builds that you can sink like 10, 12 meters into. It kind of reminds me of the in stacker or the aura stacker in a way before. Now the reason being is that so many of the pieces can are like synthesized or you could get like it's double influence crafted and you can try to corrupt the helm, you can get a double corrupt. And there's just so many things. And lastly, large clusters are so expensive on this build. Like this cluster over here is already like what? Let's see like 50, 60 X. And that just is pretty much like the in stacker in terms of how much or the aura stacker in terms of how much you can spend the sky is the limit so if you want to play a build that has a lot of ceiling and you can constantly keep upgrading it and have every single upgrade feel meaningful and like you're actually progressing the character for instance if you play a toxic rain character you can spend like one mirror on your character you can spend two mirrors and you probably won't even feel the difference that much in your clear speed and that's just a horrible thing to have for this character, every single upgrade I made, I went back and did another simulacrum to try it out. And it always felt like it was getting better and better. And this character is still in its infancy stage in terms of how strong it can be. Now, some of the cons for Instacker is mainly regarding the playstyle. Instacker is a two-button skill, right? So you have um, KB for a clear, and then you have to use Power Siphon for single target. Now, this is super annoying. Power Siphon... Is not exact does not exactly do well when there's a lot of mobs. So in Simulacrum, for instance, or in Invitations, if there's a lot of bosses up at one time, you're kind of screwed over. You can't do damage to multiple bosses at a time. You pretty much just have Power Siphon and that's it. So in Stacker's single target playstyle pretty much becomes like you have to walk up to the boss each individually and immediately one-shot it. And you don't really have any cleave damage in terms of boss damage, which is a huge issue. So if you don't have the certain threshold of damage when you do invitations, you could just be completely overwhelmed. And I do believe Instacker has kind of a bad gear upgrade path in the mid to high budget tier. A lot of the gear is extremely, extremely expensive. And if you start off with just like awaken orbing two suffixes together or prefixes, and then getting that open suffix or getting a good suffix is oftentimes extremely, extremely expensive. So it's kind of hard to find upgrades in the 20 exalt range. And a lot of the items end up being like 50 to 60 exalts to be worth upgrading. And that's just how I'm actually running into issues. 
So now I'm going to go over my gear and then you'll be able to see what I mean by this thing of having a hard time upgrading mid to high tier budget. Now overall this character, I bought a few upgrades so this wand is still the same. There's actually someone on my stream who crafted a wand just like this to awaken orb together, spell damage and lightning damage. And then they were able to multi-mod or scour the suffixes beforehand and multi-mod and get attack speed, crit chance, strength, and it. Do believe this one is good enough for doing all the content. And keep in mind, all this gear was able to do a wave 30 simulacrum already. So this is the crown of eyes. So I actually tried using a plus one power siphon crown of eyes and it ends up being 15 exalts, which is relatively cheap with the power siphon enchant, but it had a huge issue of mana. And it turns out that dropping or using the plus one power siphon helm, all it meant was that I had to drop enhance for sniper's mark in order to make the mana work. And it just ended up on paw being lower damage somehow because the power siphon charge is equal to 7.6% total damage for my build. Now the amulet is definitely a piece I need to upgrade. This is amulet is still around three exalts in cost. So this amulet does not have a suffix, right? So this is why this piece of gear is not that expensive. This is pretty much just probably awaken orb together and then you got life regen as a suffix and then you pretty much you can reforge caster to get spell damage guaranteed i think and then that's how you get spell damage and some cold damage to attacks and then lastly craft it on percent es now a lot of people ask about vengeance cascade and if it is the best i do think that instacker currently has a single target problem and that vengeance cascade allows you to solve it because it effectively doubles your damage because the protectiles return to you and so far i believe that this amulet is super super strong in terms of how much it costs it only costs three exalts now a lot of people also wonder wider you should use vengeance cascade or tranquility which is the thing that converts your spell damage or es percent to spell damage so that would benefit from your crown of eyes and wand craft but the fact of the matter is that I believe that single target is a bigger issue and I believe that Vengeance Cascade overall will be the better annoying even in the late game. However, I haven't tested it out like a crazy amount later on or with different gear because Tranquility does benefit you a lot more when you have more intelligence. Now Azirius Reflection I'm using at the moment and pretty much just look out for a high intelligence roll and then the other rolls should be relatively important. Oh, you also need some all res on it. So this thing is pretty useful for fixing up your all resist and it also fixes up your curse immunity unaffected by curses and you also get increased effect of curses which is pretty big. Now the Vol Regalia here is pretty much one of the pieces I actually ended up upgrading. So if you're trying to upgrade your character, one of the biggest things if you look on path POE or path of building is that you will see that if you untick frenzy charges your damage goes down astronomically. It is actually insane how much frenzy charges add to the build. So if you're trying to make, get any upgrades for your character, I highly recommend finding a way to get frenzy charges in your build. It beats out an int roll for sure. Now in order to craft this chest, you pretty much just awaken orb, elevated the shaped elevated crusade of the socket intelligence gems or percent int, which gives you plus one to your power siphon. And then you want to awaken orb to get a frenzy charge on hit. You can choose to elevate the frenzy charge to get movement speed, but I don't think it's that necessary. And then you end up having some fire res on the suffix. Ideally, you want to open suffix to craft on percent attributes, and then you will reforce defenses while keeping suffixes to try to get a high ES roll. So that would cost you around two exalts per attempt. Now the rings, I still have the same ring, and then for the Intelligence ring, I decided to drop Call of the Brotherhood. I don't think like Freeze and Shatter were really doing anything. And by making us a single damage element, it allows us to benefit from Conductivity Curse more. And I are able to use Awaken Lightning Penetration to help out on uh, bosses. Because now since we're all Lightning Damage, we benefit a lot more from Lightning Penetration. So the way we end up rolling this ring, this ring I think costs around 43 Exalts. You have to make sure the ring eye level is 82 so you can roll T1 int. Now in order to roll it, you have to use, you spam the scorn essence of, to get the multi on it. 
until you hit T1 int. Now I think it costs around 58 essences total. I did end up getting accuracy rating, which I don't really need. And then when I finished this ring off by using suffixes cannot be changed and veiled chaos orb, and then I got the Ashling mod of fire and lightning damage. And then I decided to block off life by crafting on life and I YOLO exalted it. I hit 27 mana and then I crafted on lightning damage to attacks. So this is how, this is probably the best way to make the ring. And it ends up being like 40 or so exalts. And it is a pretty future proof ring in that it will be pretty hard to beat this thing later on. And then Shaper's Touch, this is a pretty unique Shaper's Touch. So it has LE weakness on hit with 40% effect. And more importantly, as level 20 added lightning damage, which actually helps out our kinetic blast a lot. So we're able to use KB, Awaken Lightning Pen, greater multiple projectiles, Awaken Elemental Damage with attacks. And then it also has Ida Lightning Damage in the links. So this allows us to get pretty respectable KB damage without using the rare KB gloves that most people use. So I believe this uh, is pretty good because it allows you to solve the accuracy issue. And it also allows you to solve your defenses by giving you a lot of evasion. I did take off these gloves in the past to illustrate how much evasion you lose. We're at 56,000. Without the gloves, we're at 28k. If you lose the Mage Blood Flask, we're still... The Mage Blood... So you're still at 28,000. So losing the Shaper's Touch is, is pretty much like losing an entire Mage Blood worth of defenses from flasks. Now, next we have the Mage Blood. Like I said, you could use a Int implicit ring kind of like this and craft on resist or not and have the dual 40 res and it'll end up being a pretty decent amount of damage as you actually end up getting 18 percent int now in order to make up the resist of mage blood you have to use utilize all these jewels and get 10 percent all res on it and that means you will miss out on a suffix so every single jewel slot that you have you'll want to get a 10 percent all res to fix your resist so you have one two three 30 all res right there, 4, 5, 5 jewel slots, so 50 all res right there, and that's how you make up for it. And then you have two 40% resist on the belt along with the int and synth implicit int roll. And then you're able to make up the resist, and you would pretty much probably be using these flasks in the non mage blood setup, except that you won't be rolling it with 25% increased effect. So if you want a pseudo mage blood like setup, you can try to use. Uh, gain flash charge on hit and then use when full so you'll pretty much keep your flash up constantly in simulacrums you won't have the what 80 percent increased effect of, or 90 percent increased effect of flasks but it will have 100 percent uptime when you do simulacrums because you will recharge your flask when you crit i've tested this out on my lightning strike character and it was perfectly fine for flash sustain so that's how you simulate a mage blood without using one and I would probably drop one of the flasks, probably a sapphire flask or something, or either like a wise oak overall or a cinder swallow if you had some fire damage on your gear. There's a lot of really good unique flasks for this build, so pretty much you can just use path of building and see what is actually the most beneficial flask for you. Now this boots is probably one of my worst pieces, so it's just... Yeah, I would ideally want to elevate a Tailwind, elevate an Onslaught, T1 Int, and then I would want Movement Speed Cannot Be Chilled, and what's it called, and be able to craft Cannot Be Frozen, or craft Flat ES on it. And most importantly, the Boot Enchant, you either want to get Damage Pen, or Attack and Cast Speed if you kill recently, or you can also get Flat Lightning Damage if you haven't killed recently. And for this build, the flat lightning damage is probably going to be the best because of how low imp my character is. Now at this point in time, every single upgrade is going to cost like 50 plus exalts because at this point, I don't really want to upgrade to like kind of a more mediocre item that I will have to end up replacing down the line as items are pretty hard to sell. So every item at this point, I'm probably going to get a pretty expensive upgrade. And this is probably the mid-tier budget that I will run with this build. This build can do everything in the game on this budget, and I believe you can do it without Mage Blood if you did the suggestions I had said. But now let's go over the tree real fast because I did change up the tree a little bit to take advantage of point blank. So the main difference from the tree is I went out the cultist route or the witch route to get the int and save up on a lot of points at the start. 
I still have Wand Slinger. These nodes end up being pretty good damage for me at the moment. So I might end up dropping it depending on if these clusters, these nodes are end up better value. But at this moment, I believe that this isn't too bad. And then I also have the utmost intellect with attributes mastery for percent attributes, lightning mastery for crit chance against shocked enemies. Then we have the reservation mastery for increased mana reservation efficiency of skill. And I took this uh, extra curse because I cursed with elemental weakness, conductivity, and sniper's mark on spell slinger. And here we have caster mastery for increased spell damage per 16 int. And over here, I didn't go over a Watcher's Eye last time. It's actually pretty important to get a Watcher's Eye with ES gained on hit. Now, this is a triple mod of Watcher's Eye with two Grace mods on it. But you don't really need the Grace mods on it. It does help a little bit for, um, what's it called, surviving though. And now we have the large cluster over here. So I'm running two large clusters. So these large clusters, you don't want to be baited by 25% increased effect versus 35%. The fact is, is that 25% increased effect is exactly the same as 35% in terms of the attributes you gain. The only difference is that if you do get energy shield, the 35% increased effect benefits it a lot more. So this one makes it from 5 to 6. And 1.25 times 5 is also 6 point... Wait, so it actually doesn't even do anything. So if you don't have a good roll, the 35% increased effect because PoE does not round up in this game, might actually be completely useless. So this jewel here, the fact that it's 35% effect, I don't think is actually doing anything, which is kind of sad because I actually bought it like that. But basically, we, we the trick is I path down this way. You could use Fertile Mind to convert your decks to it, but I just don't have the points right now as I'm kind of low level. I ended up taking Point Blank. And Point Blank... It's pretty much 30% more damage. It's actually kind of unbeatable to be able to beat a 30% more damage multiplier on single target. And since I'm short on points at the moment, I decided to use the large cluster that you use pretty much for the Berserker. So you get Feet to Fury, which is 30% attack damage and 15% attack speed. And you're pretty much always leeching mana in this build as long as you're attacking. And a veteran defender gives you 50 all attributes, some Ellie res, and also helps out the evasion on your shield. And then for these medium clusters, I decided to go with pressure points and quick getaway again. Now the reason we get these is that I feel that the crit chance is not 100% crit on this build. And without these nodes, it's a lot harder to get to 100% crit. So this helps us uh, save me up points. It's actually super high damage with 5% chance to deal double damage. And pretty much, it's the most point-efficient way of spending the Cluster Jewel in terms of pure damage. Now, overall, I believe that this tree is kind of lacking on ES at the moment, but I do believe that 6.4k, 7k is enough to survive everything in the game with this amount of defenses with 92% evasion. But we'll see how it goes. I will probably make a few more changes to it just to try it out. But for now, the next builds will probably, or next iteration of this build will be with the, what's it called, the Eleven Link one, and we'll see what we can do. We'll probably have to use a Squire. But anyhow, I'm gonna play some clips of uh, Wave Thirty Simulacrum and Maven Boss Kill just so you can see what this build currently looks like at this gear level. Well, here goes nothing on Maven. So before this, you could theoretically chain hook Hydra Spear and start the fight with max rage. And you would probably like nearly one shot the boss. Something to keep in mind. So you want to be standing next to the boss with point play. And you can see that Sniper's Mark does pretty well. Oh, we got Katava, that's not very good. Memory game, always really boring, but it is what it is. I wonder how much better my memory is after playing PoE now. So ideally, you wanna, if it's possible, you wanna drag this around the edges and put it on the outside so that you have no puddles in the arena actually.
Sometimes you could potentially like maybe phase her before the memory game, but it's pretty hard. Same thing, run around, drop it in the edge. So you can see without energy shield discipline, uh, energy shield on hit, we do have a little bit of a survivability issue in terms of regen. Sometimes if you had enough DPS, you can skip that phase. He has to cast that one or two abilities. Like overall kills pretty fast, not too bad. Maven Orb. Yep, there we go. There is the second invulnerable timer in bosses. And Kozu is a joke if you have evasion, that is. Dude, if you had a skitter boss, you'd do so much more damage. But I don't understand why that doesn't one shot me. Overall, I hope everyone enjoyed this version of the Instacker. I do believe that the damage is pretty nice. I think it's around like 30 mil power siphon or so. You could. And I think the main knock on the build currently is a lack of energy shield, but you definitely get more energy shield from either the rings or a better chest piece is probably the main way. 485 in is 485 energy shield is kind of low, but getting a chest piece with these mods of a higher energy shield would end up costing a lot. So at this point, it's all about finding efficient upgrades. I do believe that my wand is the next piece, but I got the 11th link wand. So if I didn't have the wand, I would probably try to get a mirror wand or something. And I would probably want to get more energy shield on my chest and get a pair of boots that has elevated onslaught on them. But I do believe that Instacker is a super, super fun build. It has a really high ceiling and I do believe that it will be one of the best simulacrum wave 30 farmers after I'm done with this build. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope you find more mirrors, age bloods, and exalts than me. And see you next time. Bye.